In previous videos, we've talked about how to manage mailboxes and groups through the Exchange Admin Center for Office 365. In this video, let's take a look at our last two types of recipients, and you'll see them here. We have resources and contacts. So let's start with resources. Now, a resource is a mailbox for an object or a room. Now, these are typically things that will We'll use these for scheduling meetings, right? So we can go and schedule a meeting and we can invite specific people. And then if we need a specific resource or a room to hold this meeting in, then we can request that through the, uh, through the Outlook tool as well. And that's managed using these resource mailboxes. So here's how this works. I'm going to add a resource. And notice here I can choose room or equipment. I'm going to go ahead and leave this as room. And we'll add one of each just to see how this works. So our name is going to be conference1. So that'll be conference room 1. I can set an email address, conference1 at bassett321.onmicrosoft.com. So the reason this has a mailbox is when I go to request this, it'll send an email to this address and then something will happen. We'll talk about what that is here in a minute. Something will happen when we go to request that, which will allow us to schedule that room or not. We can set the capacity. So I'm going to set the capacity for 20. So if I had more than 20 people in there, then in my invitation list, then Outlook is going to tell me, hey, you can't use this particular room. It's not big enough. Now, the rest of this information is going to be more for management. It's not necessarily going to be used by the Office 365 Exchange, but I can set the location Yakima, I can set the phone number, let me go next. I can set the department, the company, the address book, the street, city, uh, state. And the idea here is so that I can search based on any of these options so I don't end up scheduling a meeting in Yakima and requesting conference room one, which happens to be in you know Atlanta, Georgia. That doesn't work out really well. So by putting these uh, fields in, it makes it easier for my users to say, show me all of my conference rooms that are in Yakima. So that's the idea behind that. So we'll click next. Now, this booking options determine what happens when we request this room. And here are options. I can allow or disallow repeating meetings. So if I don't allow repeating meetings and somebody tries to schedule this, you know, for every Monday for the next six months, it'll block that out. If I want to allow that option, then I just click allow repeat, uh, repeating meetings. This option here allows scheduling only during work hours or not. Same thing if I don't allow, if I uncheck that and somebody tries to request this room after working hours, it'll be automatically rejected. But then I can automatically accept meeting requests. So if I set that and that, then anytime somebody requests something during working hours, this will automatically be accepted. Now, notice when I do the auto accept, my booking delegates kind of graze out here. So let me uncheck that, and now my booking delegates becomes active. So here's what happens. If I request this resource, or this room in this case, and I have auto accept meeting request set, then it will automatically accept that meeting request, and that room will then show up in the calendars being busy for that time frame. But if I don't want it to automatically accept, I can set a booking delegate. And so I'm going to do, yeah, I think, there we go. I got the right address. So I'm going to make myself a booking delegate. Now what happens when somebody requests this room, it will send an email to me and say, hey, George Smith requested this room at this time. Should we book it or not? And then I can say yes or no. And I have this option here to automatically decline uh, meetings outside of the limits below. So let me go ahead and select that so we can see what this looks like. I can set the booking window and the maximum duration. So let's say I have a conference room and I only want people to be able to book that conference room out two weeks in advance. And I'm going to set that for 14 days. So it'll automatically decline anything more than 14 days in advance. Now, obviously, that's kind of a short time frame, but you get the idea. I also want to make sure that they don't schedule the room for, you know, like six days straight. So I'm going to say that they can only book that room for a maximum of four hours. So that's my maximum duration. 
So automatically decline meetings outside of these limits. And in this case, it's going to use myself as a booking delegation or booking delegate. If I decide that's too much effort, I can uncheck that and say, I've already got my options here. So I'm just going to uh, auto accept meeting requests as long as they meet these other requirements. And then I can put in a reply here. Congratulations, your room has been reserved. Okay, and then that will send right here. If an organizer needs a reply, enter the message below. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and create, and this is now going to set up as a resource mailbox. Notice this may take a minute or so to complete. That's okay. We can be patient for a second. Hey, there we go. And we'll click done. And so now I have conference room one. Now that's creating a room. A resource works basically the same way. The only real difference is here I choose equipment and everything else is going to be the same. So this is going to be a projector. And then some things here aren't going to make any sense. So there's really not a capacity required for the projector, but everything else is going to be identical. And for the exact same reasons that we use the uh, these options on the room, provided this will actually go next for me. Oh, hey, I got to select a na uh, domain name. There we go. That'll work better. All right, all the same options, all the same reasons. And then under booking, again, all the same options for all the same reasons. And I can set booking options different for every single resource for every single uh, room. And I'm going to go ahead and just click next and we're just going to create this just to get it done. Resource mailbox creation is in progress. Take a minute or so to complete. And we're done. So now when somebody goes to create a a meeting they can invite users and they can also invite conference one and the projector whatever rules we have in place for booking will take effect and when that booking has been accepted if somebody looks at if they enter their um, outlook client or outlook web access when they go to create a meeting and they want to include conference room one or the projector, it will show up if they're using the scheduling assistant as to whether that's available during that time or not. Okay, one more type of recipient, and that's contacts. Now, typically a contact is somebody who exists outside of the organization. So I'm going to add a contact, and I have two different types here. I have a mail user, and this would be a guest user. It's not going to be a full mail user. But it's going to be a guest user and people will be able to, the guest user will be able to log in and interact with Exchange. The other option is a mail contact. And this, the primary purpose of this is to give us a way to forward access or forward email. So I'm going to put in Fred Flintstone. And his name is Fred Flintstone. Let's see if I can spell Flintstone correctly. Okay, and then Fred Flintstone's email address is going to be Fred at, I don't even remember what query, query.com. And then I can set all this other information, the company, the work email. I can expand contact information, and I can set his website, fax, street, city, state, under organization information. I can set his title, department. All right. What this does, I'm going to go ahead and add this contact. What this does is it means now Fred Flintstone, let's refresh and see if Fred Flintstone will come up. Let's try this again here real quick. Mail contact. Fred Flintstone, Fred at query.com and then all of the other options we should have got it set for mail contact Fred Flintstone display name email address look at contact information look at organization information 
And why is it not letting me add? Huh, that's why it wasn't letting me add. I thought I maybe hit cancel and I didn't actually hit OK and it wasn't <laughs> and it just didn't show up fast enough. Okay, there we go. We did do it right the first time. I didn't have to do it the second time. All right. Um, so we do have now Fred Flintstone. So the idea is now Fred Flintstone is going to show up in my global address list. And people can search for Fred Flintstone based on all of that criteria that I could have set, all of that organization information, location information. And so people don't need to know Fred Flintstone's email address. Now, we'll use this sometimes if we have partners that we work with quite a bit. We'll just add them in as a mail contact, and it makes it easier for our users to, well, contact that mail user. So that's the idea behind resources and contacts. Okay, there we go. We've been through now all four types of recipients that we can manage using... Office 365 Exchange.